Hi everyone, uh, Lou Withers here. Just um, some little tips and tricks on how, you know, how to make something out of really things that you wouldn't necessarily put together. So I've got an MDF hat. Um, I won't be doing the whole thing today, but just to give you some ideas. Um, if you do to, if you do want to see it in more detail, then there's, there's a show that will be related to it. So, and I've also got the studio light papers. Now, how amazing are these? And I really love this idea of this wall um, with the torn sort of metal out of it and then this barbed wire. And I was thinking, you know, I was just saying that, you know when you see a concrete wall or a big expanse of concrete or something, you know, we see that flower, don't you, growing out of it? And you think, how on earth has that got in there? How can that grow in the middle of a wall? So that's what I was thinking with this. So in order for me to be able to use this, I'm going to have to, oh, I love this bit. Oh, right. Oh, peeling paint. Oh. I saved that actually and put it on my um, mixed media stuff because it creates texture. Sad, very sad. Right, so get a brush and you just, and it's sorry for leaning over, you get a brush. And I'm, again, these are the SAA. This one's called Flatmate. Great names, these. That one there, it's got a great name called the Whopper. Blooming is, isn't it? Anyway, so I've got this. I only need a tiny bit because it takes time to dry. We've got great lights here. So only moisten the end of your brush. Don't wet it because what I don't want is water on that. I just want to moisten it. And I'm going to very, very quickly and scruffily, and I mean that, apply a very thin veil of water uh, gesso. And I don't want to take away from the actual background or paper by obliterating it with a gesso. I just want to get a tooth. So it's along the lines of, you know, that sort of impossible wall that has a flower growing out of it. And then what I will do later on is once this is dry, I will then cut to size and put this on a heart. Um, you could do it on anything, though it doesn't have to be a heart. But I just thought it looked so good. Now, if you've put enough on, you will see. Oops, sorry. You put enough on, it'll be almost dry. Now, you can always tell when it's not dry because it ruckles. And ruckle means it just bevels. And if I show you that way, you can't really see it. But it sort of dips, and that means it's wet. Now, if I wanted to straighten that back down, I could, one, leave it to dry under a book or heat dry it. It's still buckle. But I could dry this side and then it levels it out, or put water on it, it levels it out. Anyway, I've got this here, so you choose the side, and don't forget Studio Light. These are a printing element, but they're absolutely brilliant to show you how you can, uh, you know, incorporate those colours that are in this, in your work. So I find this really helpful, and I actually keep these, and I keep them in a little book, um, so that I can see which colour captures together. Anyway. So I've got that. Um, the lovely Kate decided that she liked the hydrangea. So um, I do as well. So I've got it on a block. Now it's up to you what colour you use. You could use black, but I don't want, excuse me for leaning over, but I don't want it to be really bright because it, it's almost like, not fairy like, but it's like, how on earth can that be there? How can that be real? So I'm using brushed burlap. I did, you know, I did before. I was like, this, this isn't working very well before in the um, before testing, and I was thinking the wrong side. So anyway, there is a right and a wrong way of stamping this because it's got like the little uh, stalks there. So it's up to you. But I'm just going to stamp it on now. I was saying to Kate, it'd be really good if you could do this 3D decoupage it, which is what I will do later on. So I've just stamped this now. And I've stamped it in brush corduroy. And the reason I've done that is because it links really well with the colours there. So just stamp that there. You can hardly see it, but I quite like that idea. Now what I'm going to do is just pick up a tiny bit of the brush corduroy and gesso together. And I'm going to paint the leaves in. So you can just see it. I mean, it might be... Personally, it'd probably be better if I'd have done it in black for you to see. But you get the idea now that I'm just going to paint in 
the flowers. Now I'm going to use this colour with a little bit of blue in it. So I'm just going to paint the leaves in. And you can paint in as many as you want. You don't have to be neat. I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of water because you can see it's drying quite well. Now what you can do, which is a bit of a cheat I know, is do this, let it dry and then you can re-stamp over it. So there's no right and wrong way with doing this. Because I'm, with me painting over it, you won't actually see it. I'm just creating texture and interest. So I've got a little bit of this here, a bit of dark. I mix up your colours. And you get a great effect. This is a... It's probably been around for hundreds of years, this, but I always used to use this in school when some of the students... You, I know what it's like. You want it to be perfect and you go out the lines and you think, right, that's it, I'm ruined, I'm throwing it away. And this is a great way of sort of getting over that and thinking, actually, even if I go over the lines, I can repaint areas and work back into it. So, as again, using these colours. Now, there's a little bit of the green. Well, it's like a teal colour and I'm looking at the rust and the bright, quite bright colours here. So... What I would do is just bring in a tiny bit of a colour. Now, I'm going to use, if I look at this next to it, I think this is a really close match. And this is a Serenity one. So I'm just going to just see here. Yeah, perfect. And what I'm going to do is, because that's very, very bright, I'll show you what I mean. I was to just put that on. That overpowers everything. So again, you mix it with a little bit of the brown. You'll get a softer green. You bring that in. A bit of the white. So you're just using everything that you've got there. I know it looks a mess like this, but it should do. Because it, it's like what we'd call... Leonardo da Vinci would do this and call this an underpainting. It's about where you you know placing your where you placing the the all the parts of your drawing and everything. So you'd leave that to dry normally, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go straight on. Now you've got two choices. You can go back in with the brown if you want, or you can introduce another colour. It's entirely up to you. So you can stamp with the paints as well. If I wanted to, I could just get like um, I could use the teal or the dark brown. I think I'm going to go with this. Is a very dark brown, and I'm just going to rub it onto the stamp. Willy nilly, I'm not worried. I'm just going to do this. And just so I can see what it looks like, I'll just stamp on another bit. Perfect. So you can just see now the depth of colour. And I'll do it on here now. So, again, easiest way of doing it. I'll just tiny bit of water. It's hardly in it. You can't even see it. And then brush across the two paints or whatever colour you want. And then just go very lightly. You see, the more paint you put on, the stronger the colour. The more water you, you put on, the more watercolour effect. So, there we go. I'll do that now. Oh, by the way, this is a great palette. So you can take it off and put it there. Anyway, give it a bit of a huff. <sighs> Try. Don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I hope this worked now because I've done that. I'm chatting too much. Oh, yeah. So now I've got all these colours in the background. What I can do is add my good old favourite and just bring in a little bit of depth using the colours in it. So I've got the green. I'm not worried about mixing the colours up. They're already in the picture. And I'm just isolating this to bring it out a little bit more. You can still see all that wonderful texture in the background where the wonderful, um, what's it called, chicken wire or whatever it is, mesh is. But then what I would do is put this on a heart. I think maybe it needs a tiny bit of just extra. So just looking at this now, that tealy colour, which is a brilliant colour, I think I would just bring it 
in the middle of some of them. Now that's way too much, but it doesn't matter because you just blend it out. But it's just so it gives it a little bit more definition. But you don't need it all over. Just pick the biggest flowers and put that on there. And then you would choose your surface. Like I said, I've gone for that heart and I would cut this out. Well, I would stick it down first and then I would just sand the edges. And I, so I'll show you what I mean. I would get that on there and then I would just isolate where I want it. So I want it to be that way. So I would just look at that and I'd get that to be the bottom. If I just show you now what I mean, fold it round. Not doing a great job of this, am I? But you could add more if I show you. Good thing this. I went out and I got everything else apart from my scissors, but it would eventually just be that bit there. Oh, we've got scissors, yes. Thank you very much. I've done all that. So stick that down there. I'm just going to pop that there. I can just see. What you would do, that's a good little tip that actually, if you put that down there and you know where you want to be with it, just run your fingers along it and you'll get, this is a little bit big this, but I would put other colours on it as well, uh, other flowers, sorry, and you just see where the love art is, and then I would just chop this out quite quickly, because what I don't want to do is have it really nice and neat, I would stamp it, there it is, Um distress it and then I would add what's a little bit of sand into the, the edges and even like a little bit of gesso and stuff so I would just put that there glue that there and I would have oops rubbish that but you get the idea and then I would just put that and I would put another one here right in behind but I think what I would do is just create a little bit of interest in the background just by adding very subtle and you can use your brush again because it looks a bit harsh it just looks like there's one stuck there and a little bit more texture in the background using the stamp that you've you've already used and then it's a really nice way of adding interest and that is basically it. But you would then chop all that out with your sanding block and it does work really well. You, all, you, all you're doing is taking the edges off using a sanding block like this. And then that will, that will then take all the paint really well and all the distress. So when you actually distress that, you get that wonderful effect. You just see there, just rip that off, you get that wonderful effect there. So take your time with that, mount it up. If it's got little bits of white here, don't worry, all you can do is just paint that in. But you've got a good start there, and I would add more and more and more, and even a 3D one on the top. So hopefully, little idea how to get started using painting techniques on order, on papers you've already got. Try papers you don't really like if you want to paint over them, but it gives you an idea of how you can layer up and create decoupage and depth and everything using papers. So hope you've enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing it and um, hopefully I'll see you again soon.